Good morning, and thanks for joining today's dialogue, Protecting Antarctica, Argentine-Chilean Environmental Diplomacy in the Southern Ocean. My name is Benjamin Gadan. I direct our Latin America program at the Wilson Center. Since 2020, our Latin America program and the Wilson Center's Polar Institute have been collaborating to support large-scale marine conservation in the Southern Ocean. I take no credit for their great work on the Arctic. The Southern Ocean is far from everything and extremely cold, but it is home to a unique community of marine life, including Antarctic krill, a favorite food for penguins and seals. It is also vulnerable both to rapid climate change and human disruptions, such as overfishing and plastics pollution. In response, for many years now, Argentina, Chile, and other countries have tried to mobilize international support to protect the Southern Ocean, promoting agreements on marine protected areas through the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, known as CAMLAR, an international organization responsible for protecting Southern Ocean wildlife. So far, the 26 member countries and the European Union that make up CAMLAR have reached some important agreements, but there is much, much more work to be done. In just a few days, CAMLAR members will gather again, this time in Santiago, Chile, to consider three ambitious proposals for marine protected areas in the Southern Ocean. Today, we'll focus on one of those historic projects, the Western Antarctic Peninsula proposal, which Argentina and Chile helped design and have been championing internationally. The proposal represents more than a decade of scientific research and international negotiations. Now, there is no time to spare in reaching an agreement and implementing it. Recent projections suggest we may be entering a new and more dangerous chapter in the climate crisis as El Nino increases global temperatures even further. For that reason, protecting the Southern Ocean will be vital not only to the marine life that already calls it home, but to species that will migrate to colder and deeper waters as their traditional habitats warm. I'm now thrilled to turn over this conversation to my colleague, Evan Bloom. Evan is a senior fellow in the Wilson Center's Polar Institute. He's an expert on polar issues and a former senior official in the State Department with deep experience on the international negotiations surrounding marine protection. Evan will introduce our other expert speakers, including representatives of the governments of Argentina and Chile, as well as civil society leaders advocating for more ambitious action to protect the world's seas, including the Southern Ocean. They join us from Punta Arenas in Southern Chile, from La Plata, Argentina, and elsewhere. I'd like to quickly thank a few colleagues for their help organizing today's important discussion, including Anders Beal, Oscar Cruz, and Beatriz Garcia Nice as well as my colleagues in the Polar Institute for their continued collaboration. Over to you, Evan. Ben, thank you very much, and good morning to everyone. Um, this is a great opportunity to discuss uh, Antarctic marine protection and Argentine-Chilean environmental diplomacy in the Southern Ocean, which is uh, the topic. We, we have uh, a great group of people uh, and experts to talk with us um, at an important moment in Antarctic diplomacy and in relation to ocean conservation generally. So the, the annual Antarctic Treaty Consultative meeting was just completed in Helsinki uh, a week ago. And later this month, Chile will host a special meeting of CAMELAR focused just on marine protected areas. And uh, CAMELAR is the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, as Ben said, a treaty-based organization that handles fisheries management and conservation in the Southern Ocean that surrounds Antarctica. Um, so CAMELAR hasn't, has not been able to make progress on marine protected areas since 2016, a year when there was a major success with its establishment of the world's largest MPA in Antarctica's Ross Sea region. That MPA was based on a joint proposal of the United States and New Zealand. But since then, and despite tremendous support for MPAs within the commission, uh, due in particular to opposition from China and Russia, there has been little progress on the three main large scale MPA proposals 
as well as difficulty with implementation of existing ones. So uh, Camelar is looking uh, deeply at this question of MPAs. Um, it has uh, 27 members and 10 additional exceeding states, and they're going to be getting together to discuss, to discuss the MPAs in particular. And I was the US commissioner to that organization from 2006 to 2020. And so these are issues that I, I followed quite closely. So Camelar, along with the Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meeting, uh, which meets pursuant to the Antarctic Treaty, make up the main elements of what's called the Antarctic Treaty System. Today, we'll focus on one of the three major proposals uh, advanced, this one advanced by the governments of Argentina and Chile. And we have some terrific experts on the proposal related to the West Antarctic Peninsula, uh, sometimes referred to as Domain One. We'll explore the content of that proposal, what it can achieve for marine conservation, including in relation to the worldwide goal of protecting 30% of marine areas by 2030, so-called 30 by 30 objective, and what we can hope to come out of the special meeting in Santiago. So our, our speakers will make some uh, uh, opening remarks, and then we'll have time for discussion, and we'll conclude at the hour at, at 11 a.m. So uh, like Ben, I'd like to thank uh, uh, colleagues in the Latin American program, including Anders Beal for organizing the event, as well as the Wilson Center uh, IT staff for their efforts in making this possible. So um, our speakers this morning, uh, Marcelo Lepe is the director of the Chilean Antarctic Institute. Uh, before this, he was a researcher for the Institute for 15 years, having led the scientific department from 2010 to 2016. Since 2015, he is president of the National Committee for Antarctic Research, and he is a vice president of the scientific, scientific committee on Antarctic research. And he uh, will talk about the history and process of arriving at the Domain One NPA proposal since 2011, and explain the importance of the upcoming Camelar special session on MPAs in Santiago. Mercedes Santos uh, is the Argentine alternate representative to the scientific committee at Camelar, and she works on, uh, also with the Chilean Antarctic Institute. She'll talk about the science behind the MPA proposal and Argentina and Chile's scientific vision and other vision for convincing others at Camelar about the need for protecting uh, the Antarctic Peninsula in particular. Max Bello is an international ocean policy expert who has worked in the environmental arena for over two decades to advance marine conservation priorities. He's affiliated with Marine Conservation NGO, Mission Blue. And he'll be telling us about the conservation efforts of Mission Blue and why it is focused on Antarctica and why it supports uh, this MPA proposal in addition to other Southern Ocean conservation initiatives. And uh, finally, Andrea Capuro is the chief of program staff of the Ocean Foundation. Um, and, act, and she acts as an advisor for MPAs at Agenda Antarctica. She played a key role in the Argentinian team that led to the Domain One MPA proposal. And she'll speak in particular to the role of civil society in promoting the Domain One MPA and how NGOs should focus on marine conservation and how they would uh, deal with uh, consensus building in that context. So, um, let me turn the floor over to Marcelo and thank all of you for being here. Marcelo. Thank you very much, Ion. Uh, it's a great pleasure and thank you for the Wilson Center to organize this meeting. Um, just, I'm just coming back uh, also from Helsinki and uh, this was part of the important part of the discussions in the, in the uh, uh, the treaty system. But uh, I want to start with a short reflection about uh, when we started more than 60 years ago with the Antarctic Treaty System, probably 
no one paid attention to the relevance that finally the protection of the entire entire continent will have in the future of the humanity and the uh, the importance of Antarctica related with the climate change scenarios that we are living today. We are just passing through probably the hardest uh, winters, hardest in terms of uh, not cold winters in Antarctica. Uh, the last year, uh, Margaret Bay inside the Antarctic Circle, close to uh, uh, three stations of, of uh, programs, including Argentina and Chile, were not frozen by second year. Um, it is extremely important to understand the relationship that had with the marine protective area that we will discuss today. And also uh, the effects in the coastal, in the central coastal areas of, uh, of Chile were extremely relevant and we started to discover that since 15 years that uh, what happens in between the area of the Antarctic Circle and the northern tip of the peninsula in terms of heat waves and uh, the installation of these uh, high pressure systems uh, are producing uh, very relevant uh, events in the coastal area of Chile. This is something that we never discovered before. And when we started discussing about the marine protected area was not relevant. Today, more uh, including uh, all the values that we uh, want to protect in the area, there is a very practical dimension related with the possibility of Chile and Argentina to develop uh, any uh, development model for the near future. Whatever uh, you uh, will be your, uh, um, your plan for the near 25 years, we have to uh, put in our equation this factor that will be extremely relevant. So the marine protected area has not only the uh, the value to protect uh, uh, the life inside the, the, the area is also relevant uh, and closely related with the events that are happening far away from the marine protected area. And this is a dimension that is starting to be very relevant in the, in the table. So saying that, uh, I want to make a short review about the history of uh, uh, the marine protected area. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the western sector of the Antarctic Peninsula is an unusual region for several reasons, along with the Arctic, some, uh, has some of the most pronounced environmental changes in recent decades. Uh, uh, a recent report of the SCAR that, that was introduced uh, uh, by second consecutive year, the actualization in the Antarctic Treaty System is saying that it probably one of the five uh, uh, more affected areas in the world. Um, the rising air and uh, ocean temperatures have resulted in a number of physical uh, change. Uh, probably Mecha will uh, explain it uh, further. I, I want to, I don't want to go deeper in this. Uh, it is a, a, a sort of uh, advance. Um, so particularly uh, the southern part of the West Antarctic, Western Antarctic Peninsula is extremely important for that. Some changes in the operation in the fishing fleet, uh, as well as the environmental alterations, such a, as the rising temperatures that I mentioned, and the decreasing in the sea ice extreme in the last season, uh, with less than 1.5 million square meters uh, kilometers in, in Antarctica, uh, is uh, have allowed access to fishing areas for longer periods each season. This increases the concentration of the catches in both time and space in uh, areas that also a feature of the present, uh, presence of important populations of animals that depends of crustaceans, including penguins, seals, and whales, uh, the later having experienced remarkable recovery during the last decades following the whaling ban. There is now an increased risk of competition of resources between the commercial fisheries and the animals that depend on krill. So since 2012, Chile and Argentina have been working together on a proposal to establish a marine protected area uh, in the area that includes the Antarctic Peninsula, the southern portion of the Scotia Arc, uh, that in an area way called in Camelar uh, Dominion, domain one. In its first stage, the process in, involved 
workshops and international recognized experts to define the conservation targets, uh, the protection percentages, and what specific data was available to carry out special planning for the protection of the species and ecosystem in the area. So based in the CAMELA standard for using the best available scientific information, uh, 146 data layers were uh, defined in 2017 meeting and used to propose the conservation priority areas, the CPAs, uh, as well as the preliminary marine protected area proposal. This will provide additional protection for the following representative benthic, benthic and uh, pelagic environments, large scale benthic and pelagic ecosystem processes, areas uh, important for the life cycle of zooplankton, including the breeding areas for krill, uh, uh, areas important for the life cycle stages of fishes, uh, distribution of marine mammals and birds uh, during key stages of their uh, life cycles, and unique or rare benthic habitats. Since 2018, the proposal for the establishment of a marine protected area, Dominion One, uh, has been presented through the conservation, uh, uh, through a conservation measure. However, Camelar has failed to reach the necessary consensus in the commission or for its uh, adoption and establishment. This proposal established areas where krill can be taken, uh, especially krill fishery zone, according to the conservation measure established by the commission. It's also established at general protection areas, uh, GPC, but I, my feeling is that also Mercedes will go further in that. It's prefer it's preferable to understand it uh, seeing a map. Uh, but the range also includes another large general protection areas uh, for several important uh, uh, zones in the life cycles of krill, like Margaret Bay that I mentioned uh, at the beginning, which has a complex ecosystem due to its particular oceanographic characteristics. For the Dominion One Marine Protected Area proposal, due to the complexity of the area in questions in, and in terms of the environmental, scientific, geopolitical, and commercial fishing interests, has been the subject of uh, lengthy discussions in recent years. To date, it has not been possible to reach a consensus for its adoption. Uh, here arise the special meeting in Santiago in, 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 a few, in a few days, in a week. Uh, there is uh, this growing awareness about the importance of to establish these marine protected areas. We will dis discuss through the, this meeting. Uh, in recent months, uh, the exposure of uh, this issue in the media and the high level uh, meetings have grown considerably, and uh, in addition, in the recent IPCC report on the effects of the climate change promotes efforts and to build momentum to act for the protection of the oceans. Despite this, because of the different political views, it has been impossible to reach a consensus, and that's why the next uh, special meeting is so important in order to reach an, uh, an agreement uh, that will uh, be a roadmap, especially uh, the roadmap is not a resolutive meeting, it's uh, uh, just to approach positions um, in the process for the adoption of the marine protected areas. Havelar has been uh, the, the world leader in the conservation uh, since 2012 in relation with the marine protected area Dominion One and it was agreed to adopt a representative network of marine protected area. However, Camelar has failed to move forward on what it was agreed and due to different political views, the process has not progressed since 2016 when the Ross Sea Marine Protected Area that Eva mentioned was adopted. For this reason, Camelar needs to get back on track and adopt further protection measures in response to the climate emergency. 
So, of course, there are many other things that could be said about that, but uh, I want to uh, go back with it and, and uh, well, for further discussion. Thank you. Marcel, thank you very much. That's a really great way of, of beginning the discussion. And um, we were both in Helsinki uh, a week or so ago. And since this is uh, perhaps this question of MPAs is the most important issue in Antarctic diplomacy, it really was what was being discussed on the margins among all of the, delegate, the delegates and getting ready uh, for the meeting in, in Santiago. So now I'd like to turn to uh, Mercedes and Mercedes, uh, apologies. I think I mentioned something about uh, the Chilean Antarctic <laughs> Institute at the beginning. I, I know that you're from Argentina, so apologies, uh, but now we get the Argentine uh, perspective. Uh, please go ahead. That's okay, we're brothers in South America. Um, okay, I will share my screen with some slides to help my, to explain my, my vision of our work. You can see now, I need, sorry, I want to share like, like that. So as Marcelo mentioned, I'm going to speak about MPAs in the context of climate change. And as Marcelo mentioned, the Antarctic, the Western Antarctic Peninsula is one of the places in the world that records the most uh, the, uh, variability in the in some of some physical parameters this is an infographic very clear in, for me very clear informa infographic that is explaining that the the sea surface for instance the sea surface temperature is increasing the sea ice is becoming more variable and, and the forecasts are uncertain. One important issue is that the sea level is raising. And, and also this, vari this variability in the environmental is linked or related or impacting in the marine life. And we already see uh, some changes in the trends of uh, marine and marine you know, mammals and sea and seabirds. Uh, trends, some species are declining, part in part probably due to climate change, and some species like krill, and this is for me quite important, are moving south. So um, the important issue here is that what happens in Antarctica does not stay in Antarctica. It's like one of, of the main concerns in the world are the increase in the sea level that is going to impact in other regions of, of Antarctica. Um, and there are other other um, components that we also be could could impact in in globally. No, this this is important. So the discussions here that we are having now is the establishment of a network of MPAs in in Antarctica, and how this will contribute globally. This is a question, and this is some of the things that we need to share at Camelot or to discuss further to, to know the, the, the place or the importance of uh, establishment of an MPA, of MPAs. So we have these environmental variables or these uh, that are changing due to climate change and then also an impact on marine life. Why, what are the M MPAs benefit? For one, one side, we have very useful or uh, for climate change adaptation by enhancing resilience. This means that when we have a more uh, increased diversity in ecosystem, when we have might have a stressor on, on the on in on this area, we reduce the chance, the, the chance to, to have a negative impact because we have a diversity and we can uh, better um, support changes in the area. And also um, another benefit of an MPA is that they are uh, contribute to carbon sequestration. So if we think about globally, we have some benefits in the regions, in the area, and some benefits that are global. And in that, and that is a positive, will create a positive feedback between what happens in Antarctica and what happens in another oceans. If we think about Domain 1 MPA, this is the last version of, of the Domain 1 MPA proposal. I have been working with Andrea, that is here now, and we have been working on, on this model together with our colleagues from Chile, 
since 2012, and the one preliminary version was sent, uh, introduced in, in 2017, and from that it has been evolving, evolving until now. And why is that? Because we, uh, as, as we say, it was said, this MPAs are discussed in the Camelar environment, or it's under the, the Camelar, uh, it's decision of Camelar to establish a, a, a network of, of MPAs in Antarctica. And this, in, this takes into account the vision of different members because MPAs has to be adopted by consensus. So we don't have, we don't necessarily have the same visions about what an MPA means and what is the, the purposes of an MPA in Antarctica. This is the last version, as you can see, the blue ones is the general protection zones where no creep fishery or fishery, commercial fishery is allowed. And this in, these areas in orange are areas which are called creep fishery zones and where the uh, creep fishery activity is allowed. Uh, the commercial creep fishery activity is allowed. And this is because um, in Camelar, um, there is some things that we need to take into account. Not all MPAs are the same in, in, uh, inside and outside Antarctica. We, it depends on the local vision, the regional vision, the, the discussions that are being held in that area. So for Camelar members, for Camelar, for the establishment of an MPA in Antarctica, we have to be taking into account the precautionary approach. And also there is something that is being discussed nowadays a lot. It's conservation includes rational use. So in Antarctica, for us, the better way to move forward for in a, in a proposal is to take into account all members' visions to have a common ground to move forward in this, um, in this discussion about the establishment of MPA. And so when we think about what science do we need for, for MPAs to be approved, um, I would say that is all the MPAs proposals established uh, discussed in Antarctica are based on the best available science and there is a lot of information to support this MPA. This is the most important, but MPAs are not only about science. It has another, um, it's like it has a management discussion that also has to be taken into account. So for our background, we need to, to have in mind that we need to be, to have uh, the precautionary approach in, in our minds. We need to understand that in this area, conservation includes rational use. That is something that always has to be in our minds. But also MPAs, even if it is it's taking too long <laughs> discussion, it is a great opportunity to promote international cooperation, not only um, within, uh, within Camelar members, but also with other uh, research initiatives that are being discussed or being conducted by the same, some countries outside Camelar outside Camilla, um, discussions. We need to progress in the, in the research and monitoring plan. And in that, for me, it's very impo important to know or to highlight that MPAs contribute to increase the general knowledge of the Antarctic marine ecosystem. And, and this is something that is mentioned in the Article 9 of, 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 of the convention, of Camilla Convention. We need to develop a clean population hypothesis and if not, we need to be aware of the uncertainty of the environment and, and take the decisions to protect this, this area when we don't know enough to, for instance, uh, conduct uh, the harvesting of some species. We, take in, in, we need to, to develop biological, environmental fish and if fishing effort indicators, we need to take climate change into account in this MPA proposal. And this is something that was done for the design of this MPA, but should be done for the, the research in the future. And we need to regularly update and collect information for the for Camilla members, but of course for the public, for the public as well. And also we need to be an agreement, and this is a little less scientific, but very important, 
uh, how we are going to evaluate the effective, effectiveness of MPAs. It is scientific, but also it demands this management procedures that need to be agreed. And hopefully we can move forward in this um, incoming season, uh, meeting in, in Chile next week. That's all. So thank you very much. That's a, a great scientific uh, overview, but also I think you make the really important point that it's not just about science, it's about management, it's about rational use, it's about the fisheries interests of, of nations. So all of that has to be combined in, in figuring out the negotiations. So uh, next on to Max Bello. Max? Hi, thank you so much, Ivan. It's a pleasure always to, to see you and, and everyone, uh, good friends from Chile and Argentina. Um, this is a pleasure for, for me and for Mission Blue to be um, here as well, to be part of the uh, the fellows of uh, Latin American program. Um, um, the Antarctica is a massive continent that it's surrounded by a huge ocean. Um, we because of the map you know that we normally see it's sort of like um we don't understand the magnitude of uh, of this continent when you are when when you are there and you see the almost looks endless mountains you think like how did i not know this actually exists i mean um you can put north america pretty much inside and still have a lot more um land in the continent um this is how big it is. And then the ocean, therefore, it is huge. And the ocean is actually the part that have most of the life or at least every single species that some sort of spend time in land, spend time in the water or lives out of the water and the ecosystem that surrounds the, this continent. You know, a few years ago, um, not that long ago, actually, during the Cold War, the countries came together to protect this continent. So there's no mining activities allowed. There's no industrial extraction, etc. There is no military military force to be used in Antarctica. This is an amazing example on how humanity can come together to protect a massive area that we're talking about that belongs to everyone and at the same time belongs to no one. I was in um, in Antarctica this last February. I have been before I lived for four months, uh, thanks to the um, Chilean Antarctic Institute. And I was very young then. Um, it was a beautiful experience that really changed my life. Um, I had the opportunity to see during the whole summer uh, the ecosystem, the species changing. And also I witnessed uh, some terrible things too. I want to show you just one picture and I wasn't thinking uh, of showing a picture. Um, I hope I can, I can do it. Um, now, if I am able, no, I might not, um, I don't know. Even you might not have been given per permission to share. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's okay then. Um, I wanted to show you some picture I took this um, this February. Um, I witnessed a colony of penguins um, having little ones. They just have come out of the eggs. And it's a beautiful picture, uh, the picture that we all have in our mind when we see the movies, when we see the documentaries, it's just this tiny little penguin being fed by the, by the mother. And the problem is that February, it is way too far um, already the end of the season. The night is coming, the long night of the winter is coming. And therefore that little penguin probably already died. It was too far into the into the winter already or into the end of the summer. And those parents probably have a very precarious uh, um, possibility of surviving too because they need to molt, meaning they need to change their feathers after they do that. 
And that is a very risky time for them too. We witnessed this fairy with Sylvia Earle raining most of the time. You know, we saw um, a lot of rainbows. They were pretty as everyone would think a rainbow is beautiful. They should not be rainbows in Antarctica. They should be snowing. They should be snow. And the rain, it's one of those very alarming things that are happening because of the climate change. But at Mission Blue too, we recognize the importance of this marine protected areas. At the same time, we recognize there should not be fisheries in an area like that because there's subsidized fisheries that are basically taking, for example, krill to create salmon food. We understand the importance of coming all together and therefore we support these proposals and we think is the minimum, the basic thing that the countries need to come together to actually protect. In our view with Sylvia Earle, that ocean surrounding this continent should also be granted as the continent with full protection. Now, we wanna highlight the Marine Protected Area proposal of Chile and Argentina, which have done an incredible work. Some scientists have said that this is probably one of the best proposals of Marine Protected Areas in general. Great information put it together, great science, and a lot of diplomatic work to work with all of the countries to bring them on board. And it's hard to get a full picture when you are asking so many on putting their own interest in there. With Sylvia, we believe there is a huge opportunity here to show the world we can come together to protect the peninsula and to protect Antarctica. The peninsula, it's probably the most visited area, it's probably, it's, it is the most important in terms of fisheries, is the most important in terms of the changes that we have been seeing for climate change and others. This last year, we got into agreement to different things on oceans. We got an agreement on the WTO, the World Trade Organization, that actually is gonna tackle the subsidies around the world, which are creating issues, which are depleting stocks and biodiversity in the ocean. We got a Mont in Montreal a final decision on the 30% by 2030 to protect the ocean and land as part of the CBD of the, the United Nations. We got this just this March, uh, uh, an agreement finally on BBNJ, the Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdiction Negotiation at the UN, the, the high seas, which is basically more than 60% of the ocean, and remember, the ocean covers 70% of the, of the planet. So we're talking almost of the 50% of the whole planet. Now have the capacity, we have the capacity to actually create a frame that would allow us also to create marine protected areas. When we look into this global sort of progress, I think the one missing piece is to get Antarctica more protected. So I want to thank Chile and Argentina on the amazing effort and also, of course, the Wilson Center for putting us together to speak about this key issue that no matter how far it is, it is in your life every day and should be. Thank you. Max, thank you very much. And thank you for setting the international context for all of this and, and also for pointing out how huge uh, Antarctica is. Um, it's, uh, as I like to tell American audiences, uh, the continent is one and a half times the size of the continental United States. So it's a huge area surrounded by huge ocean. And so when we're talking about a proposal here, I think Mercedes said it, uh, the, the domain one proposal, 670,000 square kilometers. So this is a very large area and therefore very important um, to uh, international and planetary goals, uh, as you can imagine. And so uh, next, uh, Andrea, Andrea Caporo, uh floor is yours. 
Thank you so much, Ivan and the Wilson Center for organizing this timely webinar. I am delighted to be here alongside, alongside great colleagues. I am now wearing a different hat, but I have had the privilege of working for the Argentine Ministry of Foreign Affairs and close it, closely with Mercedes Santos and the rest of the team, and this specific binational initiative. So basically, for me, the role of civil society in, is increasingly significant in today's world, not only to inform the public about the value of conservation and environmental protection, but also in bringing together key stakeholders through adequate and effective advocacy efforts. Antarctic NGOs in particular have been instrumental in promoting and advocating for the establishment of MPAs in the Southern Ocean, including for this specific proposal. They continue to provide support by helping facilitate communication and collaboration between member states, scientists, research institutions, fishing and industry, and tourism industries, and communities working on similar issues helping build long-term scientific and policy capacity to inform local and international decision-making processes, and by engaging wider audiences through international campaigns that leverage public opinion. We all know that nowadays marine conservation faces challenges that are not exclusive to Antarctic wars. Uh, Mercedes has mentioned, and all of the panelists here have mentioned climate change and rising global temperatures have cascading effects on marine ecosystems, particularly on food webs that rely on very few key species. These challenges have societal and economic implications, even for coastal states located far from the South Pole. So MPAs provide an exceptional framework to maintain a resilient ocean that is facing increasing threats, in this case, such as fishing and tourism. So however, these activities require stricter regulations within the Antarctic treaty system. For instance, while Camelar has pioneered this ecosystem-based and precautionary approach, it lacks consistent decision-making criteria. The burden of proof seems to be placed on those seeking marine protection measures rather than, rather than on fishing states, proving that their activities have no harmful effect on targeted and dependent species. This, is, this unbalance is eroding trust and is weakening the foundational approach of Camelot. So for us together to address these disagreements and difficulties in building consensus, we must promote transparency in decision-making processes. And we can do so by ensuring that all stakeholders have a voice and are actively involved by facilitating the dialogue through politically neutral and unbiased discussions so as to bring together countries with different visions and backgrounds to share experiences and expectations by remaining flexible to accommodate different cultures and tailoring messages to engage in a strategic partnership. And lastly, and lastly by acknowledging that stri striking a balance can be delicate and that we have always, or that we should always prioritize, prioritize trust building to unite people rather than drive them apart. We all know that MPAs have become a widely used framework for marine conservation and resource management. Worldwide, numerous countries across continents, including Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and many others, uh, have implemented and supported the designation of MPAs. However, most, if not all, are facing challenges with fishing activities that are happening in biological hotspots or coastal areas used as nurseries or breeding grounds by various species. In the particular case of um, the Southern Ocean, although all MPAs that we are discussing, that we will discuss in the next week are based on sound science and have incorporated different perspectives some countries, including China, Japan, Norway, South Korea, and Russia, still have concerns. 
Inter interestingly, some of these concerns may undermine the NPA principles that were adopted by consensus over a decade ago by all member states. So for me at this moment, it is crucial to continue engaging with these countries and in particular to find ways to increase dialogue and cooperation with China and Russia. Both of these countries have expressed some interest in collaborating. However, they have not participated participated in international or intersessional workshops or correspondence groups that were established precisely to enhance transparency and exchanges and exchanges which limiting which limits valuable discussions for consensus building. So ultimately my 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 message and in this talk is that we all need to act in good faith and trust each other. That's the way for us to protect Antarctica. Thank you. Andrea, thank you so much. And it's great uh, for you to end your remarks with a focus on the, the divergent interest among many states out there, so, because there are many different views about uh, marine protected areas and about the proposals. Uh, despite the fact that um, there's been um, a, a lot of countries that have come to the table saying, yes, we're ready to, to, to move forward. So at this point, um, so thank you all for these, these remarks. I, I'm interested in pursuing uh, what you think is going to happen uh, in Santiago at the special meeting um, and uh, further thoughts on whether the two countries that are at this point, publicly identified as not being ready to move forward, that is China and Russia. Um, what do you think uh, they are going to be saying at this meeting and and how the their concerns may be addressed? Uh, I'll just point out in general, uh, as this group knows, Camelar operates on the basis of consensus. So you have to get everybody uh, in, in order to have uh, any of the MPAs agreed. And that's why um, uh, even though when you only have a couple of states left, you still need to, to get those two on board. So could I ask uh, our, our panelists for thoughts about um, predictions of what will be uh, achieved at the special session? And how do you deal with those who uh, so far have not been willing to move forward? Who wants to go first? Mercedes? Please. That is a difficult question. <laughs> I will, um, I don't have a prediction of what is going to happen to be honest, or if I have some, I, I will keep it <laughs> for my, for my test. But I think that the way, this is an opportunity to find a common ground, as I say at the beginning, there are some points that need to be discussed. Some of that are in relation to research and monitoring plan. Some are easier for me to solve than others. So if all the members are on the same page to move forward, I think we can find an agreement on some outstanding issues that are still not solved. That is my vision, but we need to work all together. We, have, we need to have this commitment, all the members to, to progress and try to have this common ground on some, some key issues that are still need uh, discussion. Some are, for the commission, this is a meeting for a commission meeting, and some of these points are need will need to be developed in this in the scientific ground. I know. I hope that helped. No, well, thank you. Thank you very much for that, Marcelo. What well, what do you think? Uh, I am in line of with Meta. <laughs> Uh, I am a scientist that uh, I, I don't want to make a science fiction about the, 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 the near future. It's hard to say, but uh, understanding that the meeting has is has not this pressure to be resolutive, uh, only a, a very good space to discuss further um, data, new data, understanding also the importance of the situation that the the and um, 
the peninsula is at the moment uh, on, on the traceability of some of, some of the signals that were pointed out in the recent uh, Helsinki declaration uh, that was finally subscribed um, and understanding also that uh, during the, the ATCM happened something that was not uh, uh, with put it with a in golden uh, capital letters in in, in the world uh, that is the reaffirmment of the uh, declaration uh, of the article 7 that is uh, Antarctica is an area uh, that uh, will be protected with an infinity it's not uh, uh, has a point of end that this is extremely important also reaffirmation of this declaration avoid the interpretation for many countries that um, uh, there is a, a, a shadow over the Antarctic Treaty system. At least in the declaration that that is not happening, and um, all agreed uh, the importance to maintain the Antarctic Treaty system and also the framework of protection that is the Madrid Protocol. Reaffirming that, we have a basis to start a, a very good discussion, maybe with the uh, other positions and to be open also to the new scientific evidences. Um, in my understanding, this is a very good moment. Usually in these uh, uh, meetings that you have a very uh, short time to resolve something, uh, it's not enough. It is, uh, is uh, uh, starting earlier the discussions and to have the opportunity to be resolutive finally in the Cameron meeting. So thank you very much. And I, I'm glad that you brought together these ideas of the Madrid Protocol and the mining ban and the connection to Camelot, because I do think that overall conservation perspective is, is very important to the, to the policy here. So uh, Max, any thoughts on what uh, uh, can and will be achieved um, and what to do about China and Russia? I mean, I, I have many ideas. No, it's been uh, seven long years of uh, trying to see things moving. I, I think there's a lot of uh, frustration for sure. There's there's a lot of hope too on um, on this. Um, the I feel the clock is is uh, moving, is click is ticking you now, and uh, and you could see as I was saying, you know, the changes are 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 real very clear there and and marine protected areas have been um identified as a great tool for um giving you know uh a little bit more protection to many species and many ecosystems but to take some of the threat out that will maintain some resilience to this this, this ecosystem so so it's, it's critical it will not solve the climate change crisis but it will give resilience to this ecosystem for sure um, bringing China and Russia, I think one of the things is also the long term. We want them to support all the marine protected areas that are uh, proposed, not just uh, the peninsula for sure. And that is critical to to kind of keep moving um, uh, forward. And I think um, if there is any chance that um, China and Russia can be more part of the process and not just kind of they've been a sort of an outsider they're not part of any of the proposals uh, currently as a proponent. I think that would be an important uh, sort of a step too. I think um, the countries have, have been doing everything they can. They've been bringing some of the proposals also have brought into uh, different other new uh, proponents too. Maybe that's something it's, it's, it's time to, to explore the possibility of, you know, bringing um, these countries that have been historically um, I wouldn't say necessarily against it, but at least they have not been supportive um, and in this process. So um, changing history, uh, I think it could be amazing if we can see um, China uh, in particular, but Russia and China and, and even others a little bit more proactive on being part of the construction um, positively of these proposals, because at the end of the day, of course, they're uh, for the benefit of everyone. Thank you. And uh, Andrea, anything to add on this uh, in this area? 
I'll just be very quick. I am hopeful I'm an, and I am optimistic about this next meeting, just because these meetings don't happen, you don't happen commonly in Camenar, and this is going to be focused on, on NPA. So for me, that means there's an interest to move forward on this issue. So I hope you we can really get a clear roadmap on how to move forward. And we don't just stick or we go beyond definitions and, and rules of procedure. And we can also, we can actually move forward with conservation. So thank you very much. Um, let me turn uh, to a slightly different uh, question then at this point. And I realize that we have uh, for the Chilean and Argentine governments here, science people, uh, as opposed to uh, on the policy side, but I think if I could ask, uh, my my sense is that um, this the the MPA, particularly this proposal, has been an important priority for the governments of of Chile and Argentina. And I wonder if you could speak to what the nature of that priority is and what steps the the governments of Chile and Argentina have been taking uh, to promote the the proposal. Marcelo, do you want to start? Any thoughts? Okay. Um, you know, Chile has, um, uh, through the last three governments, um, uh, this position to declare an important part of the Antarctic water. Max knows very well and have been the, from, from the very beginning. But at the moment, the definition of marine protected areas in the in the the ex exclusive economic zone is around the 40 percent. The definition, the implementation is less, but it's a, you can imagine the country that have defined the almost the half of the uh, the waters of Chile as a marine protected area. Uh, understand the the, the the importance of uh, these marine protected areas. So we're part of uh, the definition of the new government also uh, to be uh, closely related when marine protected areas. Um, when our Ministry of Foreign Affairs have defined this uh, a political um, turquoise, the, you probably showing this uh, journalist, Ilaya, is, uh, making publicity for the institution <laughs> that I belong, Inacha have produced this uh, journal in English. It's especially devoted to the climate change in Antarctica and also discussed marine protected areas. But turquoise means the relationship of the land and the oceans in an integral view about the, the, the protection of uh, and the values related, especially in this number uh, to Antarctica. So there is a commitment, it's part of the priorities of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also passed as the priority for the government of President Boric. Thank you very much. And Mercedes, on, on behalf of Argentina, any? Yes, any as you know, I am a scientist. I, I, I will give my, my vision. Uh, but as, as Marcelo mentioned, uh, this uh, Argentina has been, as well as Chile, of course, but in our country, we have been committed through different governments uh, to, to, to su support this MPA proposal. So um, this is huge. This is a vision to long-term vision. This is important for us. We also have been running the, the several bilateral meetings with some countries. And, and something that is important is we have been cooperating with other countries in, in relation, I say from a scientific point of view, to progress in this MPA proposal. So these are like, the three steps, diplomacy, uh, long-term compromise, and science uh, around the MPA proposal. Good, well, thank you. I, we've reached our last minute, so I'm not gonna ask another question. I just want to thank all of you. You're uh, great experts. And um, for those of you who'll be in Santiago, I wish you uh, well uh, in your work. I hope as a result of this program, there's a sense of how uh, this isn't just something far off in Antarctica, far from the United States. This is something that affects all of us. It's part of global marine conservation um, and relevant in that context. And so with that, on behalf of the Wilson Center, I'd like to thank all of you. I think thank the audience for, for watching and uh, take care. Thank you. <laughs>